First question is super easy. Thanks for sitting down today, by the way. Thanks. That's not a question. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. yeah. It's fun. All righty. So <laughs> pressing question everybody wants to know. How did the three of you meet? Mm. College. Oh. College life. College. So who yeah. met first? Do you and I meet first? Oh, yeah. yeah. Before you? Yeah, we yeah, did, yeah. Because yeah. we were Way freshman before. Year. You're much older. You were a than young, me. young. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Todd and I were on the same floor of our residence hall, our dorm, mm -hmm. at the University of Evansville. And we came in the same year and all that. And he, he just gravitated to me right away. <laughs> Um, and then later he would go on to date Megan, who I met really through volleyball yeah. before Todd started dating yeah. her. Yeah, I really, Terry was first. He was, uh, would come to the volleyball practices because he took volleyball as a class. And I remember Terry vividly because I went to set a ball once and he was mm. on the other side and he stuffed me. Oh. And um, I hated him after that from Emeron. And I, I've always said the very Just first kidding. thing that Megan said to me, it's one of my favorite things, it's quote, I've got mad hops today, <laughs> which is a great starting quote because it was some drill and she just told me she was feeling good. I got mad hops today. That's the first word she ever said to me. Okay. Changed my life. <laughs> and well, then how did you and Megan meet? Uh, you know, what's funny story is Megan's mom grew up in the same hometown I did in Edina, Minnesota. And so I was a freshman orientation leader along with Terry. Uh, and so on the list, it says who the orientation leaders are, where they're from. And so she saw that Megan's mom saw that I was from Edina. So she came up after and was like asking me all these questions. And the story is, I don't know how true it is or not, but the story is as soon as, and Megan was hiding behind her I was so time. embarrassed. She was so embarrassing. Mom's going to mom. Gonna say, Mom's going to mom, mom, right? Life. Yeah. She's talking to this upperclassman. I'm getting ready to be a freshman in college. Yeah. And she just goes up to this guy. You know? <laughs> so we had a, a pretty good conversation, I guess. And uh, as soon as it was over, I took off. And, and according to mom, she turned around to Megan and said, if you don't marry that man, I will. Ooh. And uh, she was single at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we didn't talk for probably another year and a half after that. And then that's a good story, up. though. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Cool. I didn't know that. That's yeah. good. If it's true. We did, we did Doesn't talk matter. to you. I do remember talking to you in Harper's Dining Center. I do remember oh, yeah. it, the, the interaction. I don't remember her all saying all the things, we'll but she to, probably did. Have to back check. Did you yeah. tell him that you have mad hops? I, I mean, I only tell that to my best of friends. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's right. So <laughs> oh, it was a good day. <laughs> all right. Well, Tad, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Didn't but me. what drove you to pursue a career in real estate? Uh, so real estate, I was a high school teacher with IPS, uh, for five years, but about year two, I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do, <laughs> uh, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I spent several years trying to formulate a plan, uh, but randomly had lunch with my dad's realtor and was just picking his brain. And a lot of it made sense for what I was looking for in occupation and employment. And so then I decided to chase that. I also was going to try to be a firefighter at the same time. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I tried. Yeah. Yeah, I got my yeah. real estate license and then I was going down the firefighter lane and then they froze in, uh, hiring for firefighters. Oh, for firefighters. And so then I was forced to do real estate. <laughs> worked out pretty good. Plan say, B. You know what? Yeah. That beard would have been great as a firefighter. Though. Oh, yeah. I mean, Are you envisioning yeah. it right now? Yeah. Just it's a little good. like ash on my face. Well, and, no. If it, you are very good looking. So. <laughs> I need that sounder from the podcast. Yeah. Super yeah. awkward. Yeah. They can't help it. Post. They can't help it. <laughs> well, then Terry and Megan, same question yes. to you guys. Ooh. You go first because you were in before I was. Boy. Um, well, you know, I worked with, I had my own job. Todd had his job in real estate and we would uh, always convene like at night and have a drink on the porch and talk about business. And so it was definitely just part of our relationship to talk about our businesses. And so I already was involved. And then he went on a reality TV show in Norway. You know how you do. You know, I just <laughs> forgot about that. Where them. life normal, takes you. <laughs> perfectly normal story. And won, by the way. And he did win. He did win the reality show. And while he was gone, I didn't have a license. So, uh, Justin Caps, who is part of the brokerage, and I, I just kind of did any admin stuff I could to keep his business running. And then Justin did all of the agency work. And I was like, oh man, I, no, I was like, I kind of like this. And I was like, I could totally do this even more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Todd, you know. And then um, he had a manager in the office that he was in who's an incredible guy. And every time I saw him, he would be like, okay, so how much do you make on your sales? And how much would you make if it was a house? And he was just an incredible guy. So finally, I was like, maybe this is a great idea. Todd and I talked and I came over to the dark side. 
That's great. <laughs> That's right. I, uh, so I had conversations with Todd off and on for five years. I was just telling somebody wow. last night yeah. uh, that we had all these conversations. My previous career had just kind of run its course and I was ready for something new. And I really liked the idea of my own performance dictates my success or not, as yeah. opposed to like, I work my job and I hope that the higher ups give me a raise, you know? So I really like that. And Todd, so we had all these conversations and at the end of the day, he was kind of like, you know, personality wise, we're wired similarly and I really like this. I think you would too. And so we took the leap um, and it's been fun. Magical. Yeah. It's been so magical. Was it <laughs> always magical. part of your master plan, you know, getting them into it? Ooh. Did you go into this thinking, I eventually want to have my own brokerage? Uh, they definitely, it, it was always there. Mm -hmm. I always thought there was a chance that I'd like to run my own company or, or, or partner with people to do it. But, um, so that was always there. The, I will tell you, like, honestly, when I talked to Terry, there was this fear, like, I don't want to fail him. You know, yes. with, with Megan, we were, I, we work well together. So I was excited to work with her. I was excited to work with Terry, but I was really nervous. You of, feel like, that what, pressure yeah, when like, you, what, somebody changes careers mm -hmm. to join what you're doing. That's a ton of, obviously like all of us have brought people into the business. And so right. like you feel that yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 It, it's funny how it kind of just goes down. Like, so like Terry's one of my best friends, bring him in and then he brings his brother in, and we right. brought other uh, close friends into the circle as well. And so it went and, and what's fun about it is it's gone from this fear of like, I'm nervous that they may not be successful to now like I have supreme confidence because we've done it enough. Yeah. That yeah. You're like, oh, this can work and yeah. it will work if right. you just follow kind of the tools that we give you. On the For sure. And everything. So yeah. it's interesting too. like I love I mean, all three of us together, we all have different backgrounds like mm -hmm. teacher. I was business marketing. He was in communications and like all of these things that lend to what we do. So it's kind of like this pie that just went together and then just like loving to work together and it mm. works so well, just has been super fun too. Well, and so before we were a brokerage, we were a team. Yes. How did that idea come to be? Did it did it literally form when you brought Megan on or Terry on or was that something that you guys like sat down and consciously made a decision? Let's yeah. form a team. Mm -hmm. It's gone through iterations. So initially, we uh, so like Megan mentioned, Justin Caps. Uh, Justin was one of our earlier team members, uh, and then he was actually in it before both Terry and Megan. Uh, and then over time, we started adding different people and realizing the team should take a different. Uh, we should we should function differently. And so we've had this growth model and we've been able to grow, which is really nice. But as we've seen, like even changing from the team structure to the brokerage is now a different dynamic, mm -hmm. but it allows so much more to our agents and the availability to them to be able to run their businesses the way they want to and grow their own teams too, which is really exciting because we have teams like the Brennan team that are yeah. starting to see that same growth that we went through eight years ago. The Kate Souls team. Yeah. yeah. The Kate Souls yeah. Shout out too, to the Kate right? Souls yeah. team. Two of us. That's where it started. That's where it started. That's exactly. right. Well, thinking about the team that you have created, which has now morphed into our brokerage, mm -hmm. I feel like we've, I mean, two years in, but we've done a great job of like keeping that vibe and, and the team mentality that we have going, even though we're bigger. Um, but where was that inspiration to create that culture that we have? Was there one thing that inspired you to like, if I'm going to run a company, it's got to look this way or maybe it was something that happened that you didn't like, but what, what inspired the team culture that we have? Cause I think if you speak to any of our agents, it's really special. Mm -hmm. And that was cool. When I got to sit down with everybody and do those other interviews, everybody complimented that right. we're really good at what we do. And, and it's just a good vibe and a good team and we care about each other. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to know where that came from. It would be nice to like act like we, did this right. on purpose, you know, yeah. like, but, but we didn't, we didn't start off with any kind of like, oh, let's create a culture of this or that or whatever. I think it's the culture. I think, especially when you were smaller, like we were, you know, a few years ago is just dictated by the people that are on the team. And I think that's still true that we've, we've just attracted people that we like, mm -hmm. like our friends, like yeah. Todd was saying, and then they bring their friends who we also like. And so mm -hmm. I think it has now at a, however big we are, 40 or 50 people or whatever, it's it's become um, just a group of people that are all kind of wired in similar ways and all that. And that's the thing, honestly, like, we, you know, things are going well with the brokerage and I'm very proud of what we're doing, but this is what I've told a couple of people that like, it, my favorite thing is just to look at the individual people and be like, I love that person. I love yeah. that person. I like to a man and woman, I love every person in our brokerage. So it's just, it's cool. I, I really do. I was thinking about this this morning too. Like 
first, I think the culture, it, like Terry said, it just happened. It really is like who we are and how we interact with each other and what we think about people in life. Like it's mm-hmm. very pure yeah. and authentic. And then when we it came onto our radar, we realized this is something special. Right. And then we need to protect it and we mm. need to fuel that fire and keep growing it in a good way. So we really are. You know, the people that come into Ferris Property Group now are special people because first they're attracted to us and we're attracted to them because it works. But mm-hmm. we are we're picky that they're the right people that we can do. But man, it's just driven by this happiness and this like authentic care. Like what we love is seeing people come right, in right. and do well, but really love their lives and yeah. love what they're doing and it being about them. You know, and, and that's really fun for us. There is a particular thing that you all have done well to protect that. I'm thinking like if you were speaking to a prospective mm-hmm. business owner, or somebody who's thinking about starting their own brokerage, you know, the nuts and bolts of it is when you when you realize we had this really special thing, was there something you realized you had to do to protect it? Or mm-hmm. is there something you are doing mm-hmm. to protect that? Um, I, you know, like recruiting comes to mind. Are there specific mm-hmm. recruiting efforts or is it in our training sure. or is it in our staff? You just I'm just curious. Yeah, I think we've seen that uh, when we, especially when we broke off and started our own thing and did our own brokerage, we started to fall into traditional corporate model and we got and we saw it and we realized like this is not who we are. Mm-hmm. And so then we made a very uh, direct move to say we are going to attack this thing head on and make sure that culture is very prevalent in everything we do, including our marketing, including like our tagline is real fun, real estate. Like yeah. there's not many companies that have a tagline that are like, we're having fun. Like that's a goal yeah. of yeah. the company. Yeah. And true. we're putting it out there because we want people to know. And we want to make sure that our agents are reminded that we're reminded that, you know, there's so much more to life than business. And let's make sure that we keep our focus on having fun while we work and, yeah. and then embody that. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I think just putting that that out there and always mm-hmm. like we're just that's what we speak out there. So the expectation and what's attracted to us, like Terry said, are those people that are the same. So I think when you put out there yeah. exactly who you are and what you believe in very clearly and openly, mm-hmm. then it just kind of takes care of itself because it sets yeah. the expectation. And in our training and our recruiting and stuff, we focus on that too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. it does. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of and there's a lot of brokerage that like what they're about is super broad, you know, like mm-hmm. good client service and yeah. um, positivity, like some of that. And that's great. And a lot of times like they have to be because they're so right. huge. For us, I think we we put out a very narrow vibe of like the fun and the positivity and the happiness and the work-life balance and all that. And so I think, yeah, what Megan said, it just, that kind of pre-qualifies people before, if, if they're not sure. about that, they're right. not going to have any interest in right. joining us anyway. Like if you they know? don't take that tagline yeah. seriously. Okay. Yeah. We, we take uh-huh. fun seriously. Well, and that's, but, yeah, <laughs> right. we take fun seriously. <laughs> but that's true, Maybe though. that's our next t-shirt. It is We're that's seriously right. fun. Yeah. That's well, but right. that's a like perfect segue into the next question is where did real fun real estate come from? Like, how did that? I know, I know where it came from. Oh, Do you guys know? I. I believe it was our marketing department. It right? was it was Allie. Yeah. 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 Our, our one of the uh, OGs of yeah. like team life yeah. and all that. Our first marketing hire period. Yeah. Uh, she came up with that. It just uh, in I think an internal document thing that she designed and made all pretty. And yes. she put that on there and we were all like, ooh, yeah. that's, that's the thing. Like yeah. that's the thing that yeah. defines it. So, yeah, that was it was her. Good She's job. good. I love it, but I'm biased. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, oh, right? yeah. Me too. I love it too. Team. Yeah, go marketing team. Right. Go marketing right. team. But with that, and this is something I've asked everybody that I've interviewed mm-hmm. on our team, and we'll start with you. If, if somebody asks you, what does real fun real estate mean? Like, how would you define it? What does it mean to you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm more black and white. And so to me, I think it defines the two things that I want all of our agents, all of our staff to practice, which is we have to be business professionals in real estate. So we have to focus on real estate and be the professionals, but we also need to make sure that we're enjoying our job, enjoying our life. Terry mentioned a work-life balance. We're not looking for agents that want to burn the candle at both ends and work 80 hours a week. We're looking for agents that want that healthy balance to be successful in business, but to enjoy the business and the lifestyle that goes along with it. And so to me, it's just real black and white, have fun, practice and be a professional. That's in real estate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's real. It's fun. It's real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I hear. That's what yeah, yeah. That was a really good answer, Todd. Thanks, man. Um, and I, for me, I, I love to be put in a box so I can break out of a mm-hmm. box. And I think as a company, 
that is something that excites us a lot is to say, okay, mm. this is the norm. Sometimes that norm is awesome and we should keep doing it and do it even better. Sometimes it needs to be shaken up and we need to reassess where we are and what this looks like. And so I think that really embodies us saying, you can be super successful. You can have a great business and make money and do the things you want to do if you're strategic and efficient and still enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. So we're like, you can have it all, but you have to enjoy your life right. and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Let us show you how to do that. And we're going to have a great time doing it. Um, and that's not normal in real estate, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And so that's, I think, fun for me to say we can, you can have fun and be super successful. Right. Yeah, that's good. I And I would also say, too, to like piggyback on that. For me, it's like for for clients, a real estate transaction is really stressful yeah. a lot of times. And yeah. so I think part of that is saying, hey, we're going to make this a more enjoyable experience for our clients, you know, that it can be a beautiful, positive, fun experience from the client standpoint. And then That's from good. the agent standpoint, there's a lot of ways to grow your business and have success. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of coaches, and a lot of trainers uh, that will tell you all these different things. Well, you could end up building a business that you hate, like you hate the tasks, you hate the job you're doing, you hate all that stuff. And so our message to our, our team has always been create a business that you will enjoy working in, that you're excited to wake up and yeah. like do it every day, you know? So to me, it's kind of got both sides of it that there's a, a fun, happy, enjoyable way to, to be in real estate. That was yeah. good, Obvi, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how would you answer that, Kate? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, Is it, you, have you, you've not gone on record about I have this, not right? Gone on <laughs> no. So, but what do you think? I agree with the general theme of that. It's it's about taking something that can seem so mundane and bringing a lightheartedness to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like thinking outside of the box, and we're going to approach it differently. Um, the work life balance, to me, it's like the perfect, it's real. like real but it's fun at the same time and it's real estate and it's it's to me it just evokes work-life balance our personality the professionalism and the fun at the same time so. one of the one of the first one of the first things that i realized uh because again like all these things like i accidentally realized it's better to enjoy it and like put that fun on display with clients and agents and all that stuff one of the first things i remember i just thought of this while you were saying that I had Devin Brennan, who is uh, one of the guys on our on our in our brokerage, uh, and they run a great team. He's been a friend of ours since that same yeah. floor back at the University of Evansville. Yeah. Um, a breeding ground for real estate success. <laughs> who knew? <laughs> who knew? But Devin, so we he and I came in at the same time, and we were he was going to show houses to my client, and so I introduced them via an email. I said, "Hey, here's Devin. He's going to show you this house." And Devin wrote back, and he said, "You're going to have so much more fun with me than." Terry, I'm so excited about this. And just like kind of ripped me and teased me in that email. I was like, that's really fun. And it endears my client to right. Devin and to me at the same time. It brings them into like that well, fun. I so. remember our first email exchange when we got introduced and something about, you know, don't throat punch Todd or before Todd throat punches you. <laughs> and I think I think my response back was something like, okay, like, well, don't throat punch me, but can we go look at the, you know, or yeah. something like that. And it was yeah. just like right out of the gate, the yeah. sarcasm, but as uh, having joined the team from a, like the consumer and the client perspective, it, it is, it's lighthearted and you, you just feel like you're doing it among friends. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it, it just kind of takes the stuffiness out of it, even yep. though we are <laughs> blazers. I mean, <laughs> thankfully uh, we were right. blazers. Yeah. We're going to be like two years down the road and be like, who started the blazer thing? And be like, <laughs> it was Kate and Marketing Jordy. Marketing department. Marketing team again. Marketing oh team man, I love one. swag. Let's make some green blazers. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. That's blazers. like the masters. It'd just be like the golf tournament yes. though. Nobody no, knows. not yet. Yes. Yes. It's got to be the bright green. Yes. The bright, oh yeah, the, bright like green. this green. It's yeah. got to be the bright green it and the little logo. Here. And yeah. I love it. I'm yeah. on board. I will, I will wear it. Okay. I will wear Let's it. Let's do this, Kate. So <laughs> before we like get off on swag, You're right. Um, because Megan and I, we could do that forever. I did wear the fanny pack the other week. Yes. Um, Megan, you had mentioned earlier. I just want to chime in about the fanny packs, if I may. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. Megan, you mentioned earlier that each of you come from different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, so that's a great way to go into. Like, how did you guys decide how you were going to divide and conquer in creating this team, in forming a leadership. How how did that come about? And what roles in that division and conquering do you now take on? It's kind of like a two part two parter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think naturally we all fell into our roles that we have. So uh, as we divide the partnership, um, we one thing I would say is the three of us, which is I've had several people like don't don't start a business with your friends like right. it's a bad idea right and we've been doing it for what really terry 
You, Megan, you started with us seven years ago. Nine eight, years. Nine, nine. Whoa, I'm way <laughs> Nine years ago. Eight and and half, Terry was yeah. a couple years past was, that, yeah, right? Yeah, like six and a half or so. Okay. And probably for the last like five years, we've been right. partnering the team into mm -hmm. the brokerage. Mm -hmm. And what we realized though is like, it, we we've got we weren't just friends for a couple of years we've been friends for 20 years right. mm -hmm. and so that we felt comfortable being right. able to like call each other out if if we don't like what's going on uh but in terms of what we do in our roles it naturally fell into it where i do training and i'm a former teacher mm -hmm. oh, yeah. megan does recruitment she is a former and recruiter. i know you never say it but you were a former recruiter <laughs> you worked with mary Kay. don't be afraid she worked with mary Kay. had 200 women she that worked with her background <laughs> she's so, really good yeah. at it and so she naturally falls into recruitment yeah. retention and then terry who's a marketing uh, degree and been in marketing his whole time and he falls into that marketing department as well so mm -hmm. naturally we all take that on but what's been great is we've been able to add people like you that are able to have their own special values that they can bring mm -hmm. and we can take some of the things that we're doing and delegate it and hand it off to people like you and the rest of our staff which is takes the load off of us and we all can you know grow the company because you're all still selling Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're I mean, still you're, selling. You're in, the, you're in the trenches in the with business, us, yeah, yeah. yeah. As you're leading us at the same time, yeah. it's right. not like you're up above, like okay, dance monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> One day we hope to I get to the feeling, dance monkey yeah. stage. You know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, but I mean, do you ever see yourself stop selling, or or do you think you'll maintain the hybrid, or will it be a, more of a business decision, like the time management, like you said, like mm -hmm. you alluded yeah. to? I think it's going to be a business decision. I think that uh, I, I could see, to be honest with you, like as we grow this thing, I think we all find enjoyment with seeing success from our agents. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that if it, not if when we get to that point where we are financially we're getting enough from that that we can just 100 percent put ourselves in that, I think mm -hmm. that's where we'll go. In the meantime, though, we're happy to supplement and bring other people in to help with those things and get us there so. yeah i i tell people like i'm always gonna sell my mom a house like right. i'm gonna be yeah. her realtor right. of yeah. course right but that's the thing i love so much about this business for realtors or team leaders or if you run the brokerage is like you can kind of as it builds and grows you can decide what you like the most yeah. and then yeah. it, at some point build it to where 90 or 95 percent of your time or 100 percent of your time is just doing that because mm -hmm. there's just so many different diverse things that happen in real estate. So I think we'll probably all take care of our friends and our parents and all sure, that sure. Uh, for sure. But I think we'll probably also find really happy, comfortable spots uh, to like lead the brokerage to and spend mm -hmm. most of our time doing that. Well, that's the other back to dividing and conquering. That's the other right. thing I noticed you were each doing something that you genuinely enjoy doing as well. It's yeah. not yeah. like you're having to pick up some other slack. It's you. Right. That's probably how it naturally came about, though. Too. I mean, you genuinely enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. We. I mean, literally could put everything out there and said, okay, what are your strengths? What do you love to do? What are you good at? And it just worked out. And we mm -hmm. crisscross over sure. things and we right. talk through things, which is great to be able to do with each other. But yeah, it really just works that way. And and that I think we find real passion from it because I do think we'll probably always sell to our moms and we'll right. have teams mm -hmm. maybe in place to help our clients because we right. do find joy in that. But there is this true passion in helping agents start a business, grow a business, create a life that all three of us, like we can wake up in the morning and get behind that every day with oh, yeah. excitement. So I, that's cool to be growing, to be able to do more in that too. Yeah. So yeah. how has it, or how has it not affected your relationship? I mean, you mentioned you guys have been friends for years. So yeah. now you're in this new form of a relationship. Mm -hmm. How how has that affected things for better or for worse? That's a great question. For that's, rich or for poor? No. Th th and that's why like, I still think, <laughs> I still think it's good advice to like be real careful about yeah. being business partners with yeah. family or friends or whatever. But mm -hmm. like, it, we are just so blessed because like, we're just always on the same page about every single thing it's unbelievable mm -hmm. you know it's like it really it's kind of like a good marriage is is like mm -hmm. we don't disagree we we bring ideas and we bring strategies and all that stuff but it's it's shocking how on the same page we are about everything even down to like strategic decisions mm -hmm. like little small micro should we do this or that yeah we're just on the same page and like gut feeling everything so um so it's obviously like I love it because it's working with my best buddies and it's super fun um, and it's fun to see them and talk to them all the time, which everybody likes to do with their friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but it's been remarkable how on the same page we are, unless they secretly talk about me behind my back, which may which happen. happen. And you this is the time to air that. Let's air that in this video. Let's hear it. And because that's you guys have that added layer of you've got kids, you got your marriage, yeah. right. you got him. You right. know, no, I mean, <laughs> they do a good job of saying. Sometimes they'll come to like a meeting with all of us. They're like, we intentionally did not talk yeah, about this yeah. so that we could all come in fresh, and we didn't. You know, like they yeah. do good at that, but it it's good. Funny. Yeah, I'm happy you answered that so positively, Terry. I was waiting to see how <laughs> you, you were really take, feeling. Is it going to take know? a turn? No. Go, no. Like, oh, no, no, no. I we just got that really out wanted of the way. to gauge how you felt. No. <laughs> uh, I do agree, though, man. We're just, it's so fun because we're on the same page. If we did have something like where somebody brought a different opinion, it's cool to just be able to talk about it right. and like become better from it. And we really are always on the same page. Yeah. And it's f so fun to work together. Um, and Terry's uh, wife, Amy, is incredible. And so she just helps. I mean, she's incredible to be around, too. We all have so much fun and bring different things to the table. So, so you think Todd has the same answer? I don't know. Is he going to come? So what here. I think is interesting uh -oh. about having three partners, though, versus like saying just a two partner yeah. regular relationship is I do think that we balance each other out, too. Like as much as we are for the most part on the same page, there are definitely things that we differ on. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's it is nice it's reassuring i guess to say that when i have an idea that maybe megan's not fully supportive of don't know what he's talking about then terry has <laughs> to take a side but then you're comfortable yeah, with it nice. because like if he sides with megan then you're like all right well it makes sense like mm -hmm. you know the yeah. majority yeah, of the partnership true. is saying this doesn't make sense i'm going to trust them and that's from 20 years of friendship right, right. right. trust each other and know that they have our i think trust is the the key word there too i was yeah. just thinking mm -hmm. that like honestly if i didn't go to a meeting i would a hundred percent trust that todd and terry would make the decision that i I would want as well, which is really cool to never have to feel like you have to be there right. or like mm -hmm. it's a really cool feeling to just trust hard. each other. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Delegating is hard. Yeah. And it is nice though to be like, I don't I don't have an opinion. Yeah. You make the call that's and then think. that's fine with what you know. So right. it's it's been good. Yeah. yeah. That's that's good stuff. That's good. Aww. Yeah. Well, so obviously bracelets. you guys lead us as a force, but you are leaders in your own right. So for each of you, is there one particular thing, person? I mean, who do you draw on for inspiration when it comes to leadership? Oh, that's a toughie. Oh boy. That's a toughie. I'll answer quickly because it's uh, for me, it's been my dad. My dad's always oh, been kind of my my guide and you know, I've seen him speak in front of crowds and lead his company. And so it's, it's always been cool. And and now he's been in retired uh, pretty much since I started my career. He's been retired. So he's my sounding board mm -hmm. as I go through mm -hmm. it. And like even us creating our own company, we had other options of going to other companies, right. mm -hmm. staying with the same company. And he was which he's generally a pretty conservative guy. And he's like, you got to go do it. You got to yeah. break off, do your own thing. And so yeah. I was, it was exciting to have that. That's cool. Yeah. And now you give him swag at the holidays. It's and got his own name swag, on yeah. it, right? That's kind of fun. That's kind of cool. I like that. He does a, almost every Christmas he gets a t-shirt. So. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Now you have to answer, Ooh, Megan. It. Now you have to answer. <laughs> not it. <laughs> it's tough. That's a good, the problem is like, my first thought is like, oh, I watch a lot of podcasts or listen to podcasts and I read a lot of books and stuff. And then Todd's like, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and then now like, podcast sounds like a Todd's lame dad? answer. Yeah, Todd's dad has Todd's been a real, a uh, real motivating <laughs> leading oh, force. Oh, come on, in my there life. wasn't like, when you think about you, your role as a leader and the type of leader you want to be, there isn't, there isn't something that you, that you've seen that you want to emulate, emulate? I can't talk to her. That is a good question. You, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I mean, that's say, hard. I probably have like a Frankenstein. Or maybe it was something I, that you yes. saw that you didn't want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like oh, it yeah. could be the opposite. Actually, yeah. that motivates me a lot, you know, and not that there aren't great leaders, but there might be, they might, there might be something in a structure that I'm like, I want to not do that right. for sure. Uh, and I would say, I mean, really, I would create a Frankenstein of what has you know, mm -hmm. I've seen and, you know, when I was in Mary Kay there, that was a really great thing about the company is it's like you, they pour into you and there were mm -hmm. these great, you know, female entrepreneurs that are out there crushing it and just learning from that what I didn't, didn't like. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and really both of our fathers, you know, and mothers are both very brilliant, you know, decision makers and, and entrepreneurial. They're all, you know, in their own right, have really cool personalities for that. And I think support us to go do anything we yeah. want, which is really cool to have that family, but also podcasts and books. I mean, there's just so many 
things that we pour into and yeah. we see all the time. And then honestly, day to day, it's these guys and the people at FPG, which is crazy, but it's always challenging. Like, you know, the Kates and the Hollies and the Alleys, and I'm, you know, probably missing 18 million people that they challenge us every day to be better leaders for them, you know, and yeah. for us, which is awesome. Yeah. Now you guys have both mentioned your parents. Um, my dad <laughs> is dead. Oh, so thanks wow. for bringing that up. Um, my, my mom is a great person. No, I would say I would say the same kind of thing, like the Frankenstein thing for sure. My last job, uh, I got to be around some great leaders who especially were the embodiment of like servant leaders mm -hmm. and um, like just wanted to help and empower other people and were so humble and um, good people. So I would say like that's probably a real foundational kind of uh, place. My brother, who is on our team. Uh, is two years older than me. He's much, much older than me. So, uh, but I've obviously always looked up to him and he's like a high integrity kind of person too. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with Megan, like it's kind of bits and pieces from everybody. And I definitely do take a lot from these guys too and think like that was a really good way to handle it. And I need to like mm -hmm. remember that, you know, you guys, you guys are good. You guys are good leaders. All good answers. I'm going to definitely wake up in the middle of the night and think of like five people I didn't say. I know. So can I, we I, edit I, this later? Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we are halfway through our second year being solo. Yeah. Um, how has it been so far? I mean, did it go the way that you thought it was going to go? Obviously, we all know what happened last year on, you know, the yeah. Happened yeah. With us. But, you know, all that aside, how's, how's it going? Yeah. I can answer quickly on I will say a couple of things. It was really hard to leave where we were. It was yeah. a great place with great humans. And that was really hard and scary. And I will say though, we put so much into it and it has always been a dream that I can honestly say there's not a single day I wake up that I regret that decision. It has been so much fun, mm -hmm. a lot of work, but great rewarding work. Mm -hmm. And I think just every day I wake up and we're like, I mean, really bouncing stuff. What can we do next? And, and what's, what's cool? What can we do? And so I would say it's been amazing and I cannot wait to see what happens in the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, it's just been awesome. Yeah. What I, what I absolutely love about it is, and this is not a shot at our old company at all because we were big fans and right. are still big fans of mm -hmm. them, but we have agents that will create or bring suggestions to us. Like, here's something I think we might want to consider. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have been able to, mm -hmm. to get a hundred year company to change direction right. for something like that. Right. But now we have that ability and we're, we're going to keep that in mind because we plan on doing this 100 years from now. I was going to say, right. what, what happens yeah, when yeah, we're 100 yeah. years old? But yeah. that's, that's, I think that's one, and we've talked about that, is we always want to be able to move that shift. And we always want to, we don't want to be conservative in our ways. We always want to be innovative. We reward innovation, uh, thinking outside the box, having fun with it. Uh, but definitely the, the the big thing that I've loved is the agents can come to us and we're like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's good. And yeah. we'll, we'll change the whole company based on somebody's suggestion. And so we want that. We also, that's what we're striving for with the agents that come in mm -hmm. is we, if that's your thing is you just want to sell homes, that's fine. But we're also, in, well, we're actually really excited about agents that want to come in and be like, these are some things I want to do mm -hmm. uh, and really kind Let's of push this company. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I um, would have to say that the, oh, I just lost, Jordy. You would have to say that Todd Ferris is brilliant. Oh, yes. here we go. Keep Handsome. Going. Here we going. go. It's going to uh, jog my memory. Beautiful I'm in every way. Yeah. That's yeah. three awkward yeah. moments. Yeah. Awkward moment. uh, That's your third awkward a moment. Soul. This is why Jordan, we don't do that in form interviews. That was really good. And Todd I was like, Ferris oh, is brilliant. Done. Yeah. Handsome. He talked about agents <laughs> that, uh, that came in with ideas, yeah. for example, for example, yeah. we had an agent who said, how about we do no fun real estate? And we're like, okay, let's try it. <laughs> but then thankfully, Ali said, let's make it real fun real yeah. estate. Yeah. And we said, yes, let's go with that. So, you know, things like that. Did that help jog your memory, no, Megan? No, it's bleeding, it's gone. But well, I will say it was, it was very scary uh, because it was just the unknown and we right. didn't know what all we needed to like we right. i would say we didn't know we didn't know exactly. and then we spent a year finding out yeah. and then yeah. launched from there um and it went honestly just as smoothly as i think it possibly could mm -hmm. um yeah we're so, pretty fortunate that as a team before we were our own brokerage we were 
pretty much functioning like a brokerage yeah, right. and we've been doing the that training for about wheels. three years. We had the training yeah. wheels with it. So yeah, so we uh, there was a couple small changes, but for the most part, yeah, it's it's not too different and it's exactly what we were hoping it would be. Yeah. Were there it's, any obstacles you had to overcome? Okay, what, what was- no, no, Stop the question. Hold Megan, on guys, go. Megan's back. hold on. What you got? You said you were talking about when we had the team, yeah. but here's what I really would say about it. I really think we are a brokerage that operates like a team. Cause oh, I, yes. I even have a hard time mm. saying sometimes- Oh, I know. I refer to us as a team I always all say, the yeah, the team. I say team And too. I think that's kind of what makes it unique is we operate like a team. Mm -hmm. Any agent, like the input is taken seriously and we're like, it's like everybody is a team member right. and that's how we want right. to take care of them and be, you know, have that relationship. But yeah, that, that was it. There you go. And Todd is beautiful. Yes. Todd uh, is amazing. He's, he's handsome. That's too many. Too many. <laughs> it's too many. We, we don't do long form interviews. It's why it's just too many. It's too many. They can go a little short span without it, but you know, we Next just want to get their own room. That's right. um, so, but were there any obstacles that you had to overcome? I mean, obviously we had to overcome COVID-19, yeah. 2020, we had to overcome 2020, that was fun. The <laughs> initial general. the initial hurdle to overcome, uh, and COVID to me was, we were well equipped for it just right. because we already functioned in, in an online environment in so many things that we did. And the only thing we really had to do was transition on some of our in-person things to online. Right. Now we're very pumped to get them back to in-person yes. and see everybody's faces. Yes. Um, so, but the initial hurdle was just who's coming with us right. because our previous company was fantastic, mm -hmm. great people, great support, all that. And so we had to say, hey, we're starting this. Like, do you want your livelihood to be backed by a brand new company, please? Right. And the other thing <laughs> is we had staff at the time, too. So if we didn't get enough people to take the leap with us, we were going to have some real problems, too. So we were we had a lot of meetings with the individual people to let them know what we were doing and try to get them to come with us. Pop we did pop poppers. I mean every single meeting pitbull yeah we did play pitbull every single meeting like lots of times over and over but uh so in the end almost every agent ended up coming with us yeah it was like 95 um, percent wasn't yeah it? it was really good and so still with us, which mm -hmm. is and are awesome. still with us yeah mm -hmm. yeah so that was the initial fear is like yeah. please come with us yeah. you know yeah yeah. But there wasn't anything random that came up that you were like, crap, what did I think about this? Well, there's probably like a few logistical Another things. Thing. You're like, yeah. oh, oh yeah, yeah, we, we need that. that. <laughs> then yeah. there is that. Like, yeah. hey, what, what's our policy on that? Yeah, because yeah, sure. we've never thought about <laughs> right. it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which but, is kind of fun, but definitely every once in a while throws yeah. a little hurdle maybe, in the hop over. Maybe some minor hurdles, but no yeah. major ones. Yeah, nothing too nothing crazy. Too Have crazy. you guys ever run hurdles, by the way? I no, ran hurdles I'm, in middle school Did track. you really? I did. I'm deathly yeah. afraid. Like, uh, how do you not just bloody and oh, die? I ran the 400 meter dash and the four by four. And my coach was like, you should do hurdles. I could not figure out the coordination <laughs> yeah. of my legs with the legs. Oh, yeah, because you I have to. So I was like, I do what now? Yeah, and yeah no, it was. I don't get so not. Yeah. So nice so back to a right over piece of there you go. There you go. Like three at a time. <laughs> nice callback. That was good. <laughs> so to somebody who might be watching right now yeah. and aspiring to start their own company, whether it's real estate or not, yeah. uh, what advice would you have for them? What would you say? Yeah. I, uh, well, first off, I would say come to Ferris Property Group because we actually like I was thinking about this. One of the things I'm really excited about is I would love it to create other companies mm -hmm. from like if, if you want to come over and build your business to the point where you're ready to go off and fly with yeah. your own wings like we are fully supportive of mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. really at the end of the day the biggest thing for us is we just want to create independence we want to create the ability for our agents to reach whatever goals they set yeah. whether it's their own yep. company whether it's their own business we just want them to reach those goals that's the biggest thing for us and so so we'd be really excited about having that conversation with anybody that wanted to but uh in terms of you know what i would thinking back to it i think part of it is take your time i think that's we took we knew a year before we broke off that we were going to break off mm -hmm. we spent a full year really trying to a design this what we consider the perfect hybrid brokerage right. but b live it for a while too yeah. so we had designed it and then we started implementing these things within without everybody really knowing what we were doing and the three of us were practicing it and making sure that it would function it would work and then we but i do remember kate being like oh, something's yeah, something's going on something's you remember that miss. something's you afoot spidey sense. I do. Yeah, yeah you do have a spidey yeah. sense yeah you guys can't lie to me yeah that we don't lie to you <laughs> we didn't lie that's to why you i'm in this seat right that's now right, questioning right. all of you that's right <laughs> no i, I totally awesome. i yeah i yeah. i knew it was going on yeah, yeah sorry 
The that's writing was, was on the wall. Yeah. You did a great job, though. That's right. Thank that's you. right. Thank you, buddy. I it appreciate was the that you did the... the test run, you know? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, that's again, it goes back to what I said. You guys are the leaders that you're in the trenches with us, right? right. Like, you never yeah. ask us to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that, for me, you know, I think of my Frankenstein of companies yeah. I've worked for before. That's that's a huge difference is mm -hmm. I know that if you're telling me to do it, it's you've either done it or you're yeah. going to, too, you know? Right. Yeah, so, I sure. you were the when you were asking about someone doing their own thing. I had somebody, a friend, that asked me recently because I was saying, "Oh, there's an agent who's with this other brokerage, and I'm, you know, we're trying to get him over and all that." And they said, "Do you feel guilty when you're recruiting people from other brokerages over?" And I was like, "Man, the thing that we have is so awesome, such great people, and they could make more money and have a happier experience, enjoy their work, like." Mm -hmm. They, will, I just know they will be happier over here. And so now I feel like it's almost my obligation to try to get them to be a part of us because what we have is such a special thing. And so uh, that's a really neat place to come from um, where you just love what you're doing so much you wanna invite others into it. Yeah. Uh, so I like that. And, and so I would say um, to people thinking of doing whatever it is, is it's, it's good to die on your own hill right of mm -hmm. th that you tried it on right. your terms and it worked or it didn't right. but at least you don't have those regrets right. you don't right? know unless you try that's it for yeah. sure that was beautiful terry thank you megan i really like that <laughs> um i would just add to both of those are perfect and i would say exactly that and then i would also say after you've gotten your plan and you're trying to do what you want to do that you find the right people to do it with yeah. because yeah. that's made all the right. difference to us we couldn't mm -hmm. have done it without all the agents that are with us and all of the staff that's with us or each other, like yeah. it's just, it's that important to have the right yeah. people with you. So. That's good, that's true. So either individually, or if you wanna answer on behalf of Ferris Property Group, what's your why? It's a good question. Uh, you guys ask so, us that, you know, I, I do, know. Do. So <laughs> for me, it, this has always been, you know, as much as I would love to say, like I wake up every morning just excited to go sell homes, the truth is it's not, it, mm -hmm. that's not why I do this job. This job affords me the flexibility uh, in my day. It affords me the flexibility in my finances uh, and, and just in the flexibility of my energy and you know my input to be able to do what I want and be able to do some of the things that I would prefer to do instead of work. For instance, like family, and we yeah. talk about this as a company, we are a family first company. We, we I said this earlier, we don't want the agent that's gonna work 80 hours a week because we don't want them burning out. We want them enjoying life. And so for me personally, I wanna spend as much time with my kids while they're young mm -hmm. as possible before they kick me to the curb and say, leave me alone, dad. We're not there yet, but it's coming, I know. Uh, but I wanna enjoy all that time I can. And this job gives me that availability and no offense to anybody that works a nine to five job, completely appreciate that and respect that. But I think about that sometimes, like if I had to go back to where I mm. had to go into an office from nine to five every day, and how much of my kids' lives that I'd miss out on, like I, I just couldn't do yeah. it. And, I think that's also a personality thing though, because I'm coming from a family of nine to five, and it's like, I, I'm too creative for that. Like yeah. I, I just yeah. can't, I want to be outside the box like yeah. you had talked about, yeah. you know? Like let me out of the box. Yes. Right. Which I would say about you too, both of you, and knowing you so well is you are so entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up in the morning and you're like, hey, what about this idea? <laughs> right. Like all the time, right. you know? And I just think that that is, you have to have a, a field for that. You have to have somewhere to play yeah. and yeah. to let that out, that creativeness out. And right. this is a great place to do that, which mm -hmm. is. By the way, I always give shout outs to my dad uh, just because he's the business mind. Yeah. But. I'll give a shout out to Connie Ferris, my mom. She's the creative side. Like she, that's you two where I get my creativity around. from. It's really? all from my mom. They're no just offense like, to my dad. What about dad, this invention? Or what yeah, if we made this? Yeah, and both of them are just wow. all the time shooting it off. It's both sides of your brain. Yeah. 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 brain yeah. Yeah. Got it both. <laughs> What's you, did you yeah. answer your why? I didn't. I didn't. I was deflecting. <laughs> you go. You go. Okay. Um, I honestly, to me, it is literally what brings me joy is when I see an agent who needs a home and that that goes back to like if you've ever been uncomfortable going into a new classroom or a new job or an office or a meeting and you've been uncomfortable that feeling is an awful feeling for me personally i do not you know i'm not really an extrovert i'm really uncomfortable at first until i get comfortable with people and i hate that feeling so literally what drives me is creating a place and a space where a new agent or a new staff member or even a client 
can come into real estate and feel welcomed mm -hmm. immediately. Any call, any meeting that you are welcomed here, that we are here to help you legit build a business and, and create what you want. And that's what I love. I love to sit down and say, what do you want to do right. with your life? Right. What, what do you want it to look like in five years? And how can we help you do that for real? And so mm -hmm. like, we really want to do that. And I think that's the why for me is like just helping people create what they want to create. And that brings us joy to be uh, and we're all competitive. Right. So that is, a, you know, <laughs> right. that's a measurable success too. If we can help you, you know, a new agent come in and, and earn what they need to, to create the life they want, then that's a success for us too. And we're competitive in that way. So yeah. that would probably be it for me. That's good. Mine is money. How much can I get? <laughs> how much can I squeeze other people for? Uh, how big of an empire can I build for just myself? <laughs> Next question. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. Take it over. No, uh, mine is is along the lines of Todd. Well, on our podcast, we have a little tagline that's build an amazing business right. so you can build an amazing life. And so this this industry has allowed me to have a life that is already beyond my wildest dreams for what we've been able to do as a family, the experiences we've had, the trips we've taken, the things we've done, and even to where my wife who was unhappy in her job was able to come and be a part of what we were doing and now loves it. And I get to work with her every day and spend all my time with her, which I love. She's able to be there with all our kids and pick them up from school and volunteer in their classrooms and all that stuff. So just, I owe so much of my life to this industry and um, it has literally been, I've been able to build an amazing business and have an amazing life. It's been really like special. Said, you don't tell us to do anything that you haven't done yourself. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, 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 I just, I want this for all of our people. Right. I really do, because mm -hmm. it's, it's just the biggest win ever, you yeah. know? Yeah. It is cool, like, as a parent to be able to show your kids that you can be there at, like, their events and their activities, but still be a successful business person. So you're showing them those different pieces of life that you can do all of that if you find the right space to plan and real estate does allow that. Good answers. Good answers. I just realized Especially you answered the money. all my sub questions, so that's great. Oh, <laughs> it was money. Mine was money. Oh, okay. Just as much as I can build. I want to Scrooge McDuck it into the vault. That's what I want. Is that bad? No, I'm just kidding. So real estate industry in general right now, yeah. what are your general thoughts, feelings? Mm. Questions, yeah. concerns, comments. So we were, we were recording this in spring of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like the buyer demand for the last three months has been unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Unprecedentededly, that's not a word, high. I like uh, inventory is unprecedentedly <laughs> low. Uh, so it's been, I, I keep saying the first five months of this year has felt like riding a bicycle in a really high gear to where you have to pedal extra hard yeah. to get to the same yeah. places before. So it was really yeah. challenging. So my expectation of what people way smarter than me are saying is that there at some point will be a slowdown to the price increase and at some point a slowdown of the buyer demand. But I don't think I think we're in for this market for a while mm -hmm. and I think it's going to mm -hmm. stay uh, very strong for the coming years uh, personally. So even if interest rates go up, which we predict as well, right, I don't think right. that's going to it may slow things down an eyelash, but I think it's going to be more of the same for a while. How yeah. long is a while? You think in like years, months? It's so well, I would say in my mind, it's at least a couple of years. I don't know if the craziness will be sure, that long, right, but right. I think uh, a strength. really strong real estate market is going to be for probably even right. three to five or more. Like, I think the thing that's going to knock it off course is something that is going to be hard to foresee. Like like well, a we said pandemic that about COVID. or a, mm -hmm. like, I know, and, I know, but that didn't, year, right? It, right. So it's going to, I would assume some kind of global event or some unforeseen mm -hmm. thing uh, that surprises just about everybody. Well, you've been doing this for a decade. Mm -hmm. And so like, old, so broader, how old did that make him sound? No, but I mean, for he's, he's, he's for experienced. Double digits <laughs> years. He's so wise and experienced. Uh, but, I mean, so you've seen the ebbs and the flows. Yeah, yeah. So what's your take? I mean. Yeah, so I started when in 2008, so right. we were in the heart of the recession and uh, and that was so what's funny about that is that most of us have a short memory. So when right. we think of a recession, we think of the worst recession right. we've seen Yep. when the truth is if and when the market does go back down and we have a little mini recession, it's going to be a mini recession mm -hmm. unless there's something global sure. that happens that nobody can predict. So you can assume the market will correct at some point. Uh, I, I agree with Terry, like I think it'll stabilize mm -hmm. and I think that we'll kind of come back down, but I could see in a few years of being a buyer's market and mm -hmm. I could see the prices coming down and there could be a lot more homes for sale uh, just because we're swinging that way. Mm -hmm. So what I'm, what I'm more excited about, which is what scares most agents, is innovation in the industry. Right. 
figuring out how we can give the clients more mm -hmm. and make everything easier for them, less expensive for them, but offering them the same great service and, and not at all being, and that's the one thing I think that we have to remember is that the agent will always be involved. Mm -hmm. It's just that we will be involved along with AI in different forms of mm -hmm. you know software and, and systems and robots or whatever the case may be. And that should not be something that scares us. That should be something that excites us. Yeah. How do we incorporate that? Because at the end of the day, that makes the the client the most like they're going to get the most reward from sure. that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I think for us as an agency is we do the same thing. Like, how do we incorporate those things? How are we always innovative and thinking outside the box so that we don't get left behind when industry starts to shift one way and we're not ready to ride that wave? Mm -hmm. Yep. Which I think yeah. is another differentiator of our company to some others. We're, mm -hmm. we're yeah, ready for it. I agree. Right. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I remember when we were looking and had you know the conversation, and you you had brought peace to my mind that Indianapolis has always been a stronger market mm -hmm. traditionally, just because of our cost of living. But yeah, any it's two cents fairly on that. stable. Yeah, I mean it really yeah. is, and same as what they both said. I really think that it'll there'll be a little correction, but it's probably not going to be anything crazy that happens in the next few years. Hopefully, the more inventory, will, you know be created and and that'll all even out rates will go a little bit nothing crazy unless yeah. like terry sure. said something right, right, happens right, and, right. but i do think the industry itself will yeah. change like right. terry's or Te mm -hmm. todd was alluding to like it is going to change it's going to evolve you don't want to be the blockbuster you right. want to you know yeah. find the way to be on the edge of that and that that excites us mm -hmm. i mean to us it's like oh it's a challenge what are we going to do where are we going to position mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. to be ahead of this and to embrace it and find a way to be a leader in mm -hmm. that space instead of trying to catch up right. later, you know, right. so. Right. Good. You ain't first, you're last. <laughs> <laughs> so for each of you, what's your one thing, you know, as you're leading this company, if, if, if you accomplish nothing else, like what's the one thing you hope to accomplish in this career or with this brokerage, this journey? Uh, I think the, the one thing for me is just simply creating the absolute best environment for agents to step in, whether they're new or experienced and be able to be successful towards whatever they define as success. Like if we can create that and we can make it as seamless as possible, then I'm excited because that, that means that we've done absolutely the best we can as leaders to make sure that we're giving everything to our agents. And so that's, that's my one thing is I want to develop that and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, Terry said earlier, you know, we have something special mm -hmm. that it's hard to not share and want everybody to be a part of. Just like anything, you're like, oh, I love that I'm doing this. Everybody should try this new whatever. And that's really where we are is we're creating what Todd said for agents to come in and change their lives for real and their businesses to be able to work smart and get a lot more so they can live the life they want, which we keep saying. Right. Mm -hmm. But really, that is that is the one thing to create that. So for me, in my mind, it's it's regulated, careful growth to be able to give this to more agents and more staff and then more clients mm -hmm. to be impacted because it is that ripple effect. And then in turn, what's cool is that helps our lives where we personally are able to do things we really, you know, are passionate right. about. So we're creating a life for ourselves too, where we're helping people and coaching and doing things that we really want to do. So yeah, my, mine is, is really similar. I mean, honestly, it is the, uh, I, Kind of a weird guy. <laughs> I was just talking with. Really? Yeah, I know, right? Tell I was talking me more with a friend that. last night. I have this weird obsession with like the second I meet you, I just want to know your deepest, darkest thoughts <laughs> and like your your childhood experiences and like what makes you tick. And I just love that about people. So, um, so I I think for me, I love finding like what the like kind of what Todd's like. What's the life you want to create? What do you want to build? What are you into? And then how can I and we help you get there, you know, uh, because we have had good models before us. We have been on the journey ourselves. And so I think we are positioned to help people right. achieve what they want to, whether that's a client or uh, or an investor or uh, the agents and staff on our team. It's like, what life do you want to create? Because I'm just super fascinated interest, and interested anyway. But then how can we help you get that? So, yeah, a lot of what what Todd said. Yeah. Sensing general theme of like the helping and passing it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a good Jedi master. Which sounds fake. <laughs> it really does. No, it sounds so And I hate no, that it's so you know, cliche, it, but it, like it, that's what gets us excited, right. you know? No, but it, but it, it, all the questions I've asked, I mean, it's kind of been laced, you know, throughout the whole thing. I mean, it's just been the general theme, mm -hmm. that, which makes it genuine and not fake. So there you go. You yeah. Give me a different answer the awkward moments are extremely genuine. 
<laughs> between Todd and Megan. <laughs> they, they don't pre-plan no, those. Uh, they don't. Pre- stop it. No, no stop. Stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. much love, you guys. So much <laughs> don't touch love. him. Don't touch him. <laughs> so what does the next five to 10 years look like for our company, for our team? Well, it's very exciting. We uh, We have... So set out some 10 year goals and then working backwards in but 10 years from now. So 2030 ish, 2031 ish. Um, we want to be a thousand person company. We want to be in 10 states. We want to be innovating in the technological space around real estate as well. So that's kind of like the big picture. And now we're just, you know, mm-hmm. backtracking to be on that path. But we've started on that road here in year one in the first few months of this first uh, year of the 10 year journey. Yeah, I think that we uh, we've always been growth minded Mm -hmm. and I think those numbers show you that we want to be growth minded. But I think that that hopefully, like you had mentioned earlier, you know, we want the trickle down of our thoughts to kind of go through the agency. And so I think that I would love for those. What I see is not just the growth of the company, but the growth opportunities for all the agents, all the staff that are in the company, Mm -hmm. because if we're going to grow there, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people to get to do some things that they want yeah. to do within oh, the yeah. industry. Well, well, and I have to say, knowing how this started so organically, but also hearing how growth minded you are, it's very interesting, right? Because yeah. it's not like you woke up and I'm going to do real estate and I'm going to dominate, right. you know, right. but yeah. here we are and it all organically came to be. And, and now it's like, we're going to do these things, yeah. which I think is kind of yeah. cool. As a it's fun because myself. I do think like the path organically creates itself. And then we, we kind of say, okay, how do we articulate the place that we want to go to, to make it more clear? Mm-hmm. So, so the path yeah. to 10 states and a thousand agents and tech innovation, it's organically that we want to be there. But then I think we had to just kind of say, let's, let's give real serious articulation to what that vision is, right. you know, but like what Todd said, it is exciting. If you're the you know, 40th person in the door and we become a thousand or 5,000, mm-hmm. but like you're, you're going to have a lot of influence on where sure. that goes and right. can yeah. kind of write your own ticket on what part of that you want to be. It's exciting. It is. It's exciting. Like we already have incredible people that are part of FPG that were already, you know, excited. It's kind of like the dining table at home. You just keep putting the, uh, the leaves in the middle yeah. and this table keeps growing where, you know, these, these, uh, positive, like innovative people that bring all this to the leadership table and we get to work with them and that table is just going to keep getting bigger right. for those involved which is really exciting too plus probably robots yeah robots <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, R2D2 yeah that's so right make that happen yes yep. yeah? yes <laughs> so here's another question that I've asked anybody that I've interviewed on the team mm. um, what is one thing you wish people knew about Ferris Property Group mm-hmm. I think that I we we come across as goofy and uh, obviously with our tagline real fun real estate we put a lot of emphasis on having fun so a lot of our social media a lot of our marketing it has you know it has references to humor all throughout it and sometimes I think that from an outsider that maybe doesn't know the company they question well how professional we sure. are <laughs> and so I do want everybody to know that we are extremely successful as agents I and mean, that's throughout all of our agents that we have in the brokerage mm-hmm. we know what we're doing we're yeah. very good at what we do we just happen to choose to want to have fun while we do it at an exceptional level so. it's not it's also not in our DNA to um to really boast some of the things like when we we run our numbers every single month and just to see you know we are blowing past our goals that we set which were aggressive goals at the beginning of the year for production and units and you know all of these things and then even agent you know as we analyze these the agent production of who's how they're increasing you know they come into the company and we track their production and and their business growth you know we don't put that out there a ton Mm -hmm. but that's what's happening behind the scenes it is very um on purpose and and successful that way too it's just not usually what we're touting right um but along with that i would say things i want people to know i think they know our personality they can you can just see that um it'd be nice to know the numbers and how how successful we are there and really how big we are you know we are really in the area if you look in the greater area we are like a medium-sized company Mm -hmm. which is great Mm -hmm. um and also just the um 
that we aren't just virtual. And right. I think that comes out mm. a lot. I mean, now COVID didn't help that, right. but that we are such a family. And I know, mm -hmm. again, it's kind of cliche, but we are like the FPG family and we, you know, get together and we have live meetings and now we can do that again, right. which is exciting. Um, and we have client events and it, it really is a mix where you get a hybrid. You get to have these meetings you can just log into when you're on the go or listen to a recording, or mm -hmm. you can go to one and connect or, play golf or go to right. a, a happy hour yeah. that we're having. So I, I think there's just so much more that people need to know about yeah, us. Virtual doesn't say it all. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Right. It means we can function yes. virtually wherever you are. You can work on the beach. We'll give you the tools and the support and the systems, but we also get together right. and we yeah. are there for you. That's why we've been saying it's lifestyle, lifestyle real estate. Real estate. <laughs> right? Because right? it is. It yep. is. I would say the thing, it, it's not really something that we could just tell you, but I just wish that agents or people that are that are looking at us i wish they could just know what it's like to be a part of this group because you know there's so many companies and brokerages and all, they're like oh we're fun right. and uh we love our people and we're family we're and i'm like that yes but like no really right. here like like you don't you don't understand like come be like come taste it and see what it really is like because it's it's at a new level it's a next level kind of thing and um I wish that yeah people could experience it themselves like before test, you buy. It's a test try before drive. You buy. We need you need to take oh, the car yeah. home for the night. How and could like, we do try that? It. I mean, I think we do. I mean, people, people come, come to, the come happy to our hours, stuff. The they can log in. Right? They yeah. come. We buy a house with us? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, All that's the something. things. That's, that's something. Right, you know? Just come <laughs> hang out with us for a yeah. couple of weeks, guys. Just yeah, we'll, we'll just, give we'll you hang out. The, we'll tell you all about us. By we, the way, I should probably mention, going along with this question, is so Megan mentioned that we're virtual. You mentioned mm -hmm. we're virtual. Terry mentioned we're lifestyle. When people hear virtual, the, probably the one misconception is that they can't have an office. Mm -hmm. The one yeah. thing we don't provide is a real estate office. Sure. We are right now at Cowork 1010, mm -hmm. right? So we're mm -hmm. here at the pyramids in a co-working space. Right. And we have been big advocates. If, if you know you need an office because you just don't want to work from home, mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. But instead of going to an office where you're working with a bunch of your, you know, quote unquote competitors, why not come work in a co-working space like this, where now you're working with a bunch of other business you're networking people and you're networking you're, yeah. you're picking up business it goes back to what you were saying earlier about flexibility yeah yeah just that flexibility to to choose you yep. have the choice you have control yep yeah, yeah. and you it's can... outside of the box like yeah. i think when you think of traditional real estate you think of a big building where there's a bunch of agents working with the staff and for us it could be some of them work at home some of them work from a co-work space but right. you know why does it have to be with all the people all the other agents why not be in a cool space like mm -hmm. this with other people that could be your clients and your mm -hmm. your golden geese and referral sources you know yep. it's really yeah. a cool thing to do to work with other entrepreneurs and when asking this question to our agents and staff that I interviewed, the feedback I got, everybody pointed to Slack that even though we might not yeah. be sitting around right. under the same roof mm -hmm. together, we're still super supportive of one another. There's always somebody mm -hmm. because of Slack. There's always right. somebody there to help. You don't have to rely on the manager in the office. You know, there's Slack it might be a five minute mm -hmm. delay, but boom, that's better than like, yeah. you know, a day before your manager calls you back and tells you what you need. You know, yeah. that, that we're, yeah. we're taking advantage of right. those technological yeah, that's really become its own thing where agents are helping agents just like right. you would if they were all coming to the same real estate office, you right. know, like we have that and it's happening 24 seven, not just yes. exactly. during office hours right. or whenever. So, uh, yeah, it's it's neat to see that take on its own life and culture mm -hmm. as a reflection of the company itself. Right. Mm -hmm. On to easier questions. You all uh -oh. did a great job. Uh, thanks. <laughs> what was your first job? Oh, oh. Little Caesars inside a Kmart. I yes. worked there for two weeks and hated it. I burned myself oh, no. all the time. And I had, all I did was I would like, I would do that and I would get burned and they'd say, go wash the pans. And they were impossible to clean. It was like pan pizzas and stuff. <laughs> Brutal. All the grease. Two weeks. Little I'm Caesars. Out. Little Caesars, man. Pizza, uh, pizza. Pizza, pizza. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> so great. Real fun pizza, pizza. Oh man. I was a workaholic from young, a young yeah. age when I was, Pre-16, I was probably like 14, I wanted a job and you couldn't get a job, you know, like you had to be 16 or whatever. So I had my mom sign up 
to sell Avon so I could sell it under her. I love it. The only Megan. thing is, so I take the books to school. I, I like that. everywhere. I was like hungry, man. That and is then gangster right? level so business like acumen. A, so I was an Avon lady before I was a Mary Kay lady. It's amazing. Is, don't tell. Mm. Um, and then so when I turned 16, I worked at a computer shop that sold cell phones and helped fix your computers, CFS computer systems in Sullivan, Indiana. Um, and then uh, at the same time, I became a lifeguard. So, and I also worked in some group homes in the summer, social work. So I just like, was like, if I have time, let's just crank it. Yeah. yeah. Um, my social life was super sad. <laughs> <laughs> Enter Todd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was kind of like Megan. I always wanted to find something to do and I enjoyed having money in my pocket. So <laughs> I'd worked odd jobs all growing up. So mowing lawns and watching dogs and uh, babysitting, all that fun stuff. I would say the first like actual paycheck that I ever received outside of just cash being handed over was from Tarragon Grill. I was a host. Hmm. I applied with my girlfriend at the time. No, it wasn't you, sorry. Um, and I got the job and she didn't. So oh, boom. No. You beat her out I for did. the job. That's bad I for the relationship. The it didn't I work took out. it. It didn't yeah. work out. Yeah, our, our relationship work didn't work out. Tarragon Grill didn't work out. And so, yeah, it was. And then I worked in restaurants for a while. And yeah. That's funny. What's yours, Kate? What yeah. was your first job? Uh, first paycheck, paycheck was yeah. Pizza Hut. Pizza yeah. Hut. Oh, Yay. it's much better than Little Caesars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pizza, yeah, Pizza Hut used to be a little more swank with like mm. the hosts and all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Especially in Fort Wayne. Like, if you talk to anybody who knows the Fort Wayne Pizza Hut franchise, he, the guy who owned it at the time, like that was was the best. We moved down here, and Aaron was like, "That's not a breadstick." Ah, <laughs> I see. Speaking That's of awesome. pan pizza, yes. did, you didn't ever have to do the dishes. No, I was a host. Brutal. I never worked in the back. No, Brutal. but I did know how they made the pizzas, and it's top secret. Oh, Ooh. look at that! Was this a shot at pizzas. like Little Caesars? Yeah, right we're just coming in my Little Caesars <laughs> here. <laughs> it's easy. Little Caesars, my least favorite pizza. It's a Although pizza. I, know, were... I think I made it like two years, not two weeks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, they told me uh, I, I tried to get a job at Kmart as like checking things out. They're like. We need someone to work at Little Caesars. Why don't you do that? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> fine. My car didn't smell like cheese. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so you already said you, you attempted to do the, the fireman thing, which I think is, is a yeah. common answer to this question. But what did you want to be when you grew up? Mm. I People always told me that I was going to be a game show host. I can see it. Uh, yeah, I know. Everybody can see it. <laughs> he actually um, was a game show host at one of our house parties one yeah, time. Remember right. that? Oh, yeah. You lived your dream. Bob yeah, Barker. I did live my dream. He did it. Still waiting for the check on that. <laughs> but um, but then I went to college thinking I was like, I, I did the marketing and business stuff. But my plan was to do radio, like sports mm -hmm. on radio, play-by-play mm -hmm. -play stuff. So I did that in college and it was really fun. Um, but that was going to be like a life of travel and schlepping the kids and like just trying to piece together a career. So I opted out, but I still love that stuff. I still we have, do. Uh, we have Megan's, uh, one of Megan's high school friends, her, her husband is the yes. color announcer. No, the play-by-play -play play voice. Play. He's the play-by-play -play voice for Toronto. Yeah, the Toronto uh, Blue Jays. Blue Jays and MLB. And so we went up to a game one time with Terry, myself, and a couple of our friends. And and so we hung out with him after the game. Yeah, And was, Terry and him hit it off really well to the point where I literally thought he was going to get a we're job. Gonna <laughs> we're no. going to lose Terry. We're going to no, lose Terry. No, but Terry. that was like a dream come true. I'm like, I get to pick the brain of the guy that has my dream job yeah. growing up. Like, awesome. that was awesome. So it was fun. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. yeah. They That's were awesome. Cool. Um, I wanted to be the first female president of the United States. Still can. There's still time. There still is still can. time. Give up. I am, I can, I'm in the window. Um, I have a while still to stay in that window, it turns out. And um, and then it turned into when I went to college, like Terry, I was going to I was in business and, and uh, administration and marketing and minor in sports studies and started my master's in uh, sports. Um, administration mm -hmm. so i mm -hmm. thought i wanted to be either an ad or i wanted to be jerry Maguire and yeah. you yeah. know be a sports agent right and so i kind of fell into that for a little bit and then did not finish and here i am <laughs> <laughs> i'd say it works out all right so but i could still be the president oh yeah 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 that's for sure good, yeah. good. uh i wanted to uh be an nba star uh, yeah buddy but okay. the fact that i scored one point on my high school team my entire career probably <laughs> Cut oh, that a little short. Up. Yeah. yeah. Don't give up. Uh, and then and then I saw a uh, there was a guy that owned a physical therapy company and he ended up being part owner of this uh, 76ers. And then I was wow. like, that's my path. I'm going to go get into physical therapy and which I went to University of Evansville to yep. be a physical therapist. 
Uh, but that lasted a year and then I realized <laughs> that wasn't going to work either. So why did it not last long? Yeah, what, Todd? what happened, Todd? Wasn't uh, there an incident? There's was well, there an incident? Was there an incident? There's a couple incidents, oh, but oh I don't know. If I, Breaking <laughs> news. Good job, Kate. <laughs> oh, so there's three incidents. Uh, <laughs> Let's number them now. Yeah. Let's go. The, I'll start with the saddest one. The saddest one oh. was I always wanted to work with kids in physical therapy. And then I did my observational hours after your first year and realized like these, these kids have been through traumatic mm -hmm. injuries mm -hmm. and accidents and like day to day is just sad. Yeah. And I was like, and that's not my aura. Like right. I, yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if I could do that. And mm -hmm. so I realized it was time to get out. That was, and, and then I got into teaching, so I still could hang out with kids, which was fun. Uh, that was incident number one. Incident number two was I uh, did observational hours uh, with an elderly uh, gentleman, and I just remember him. <laughs> like, the busy. physical therapist had the walk. This, this. this probably shouldn't make the air. But, <laughs> uh, physical therapist is walking the guy by me, and I'm just observing. And every step he took, he tooted. <laughs> yeah, well, like, we'll leave that in. We'll leave it in. It's long form. I used tooted so that it'd be Yeah, that's right. It's fine. It's just move apart. on now. Number three. Okay, number, number three. three. <laughs> this is the one Megan was calling about. Maybe my priorities were a little different back in the day, but I also did observa observational hours and was upright for a part of them. And and at one point woke up with looking down a hall, I had passed out. Oh, wow. And, uh, oh, wow. and so, yeah, the, the guy looked at me and said, I think you're done here. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Get more sleep, people. That's but we're key. happy that PT brought you to UE. So that yeah, but that, yeah, got we all had our journey to UE. Yeah. 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 And here we are now. Oh, <laughs> I lost my questions. OK. Stop oh. it. No, no, no. Are we on six? Yeah, no, they didn't <laughs> touch it still. Yeah. Five and a half. Um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I'd fly, hands yeah, down. I think yeah. flying. I just want to fly places. Too. Yeah. He's so awesome. Yeah. Well, Todd's right already there. doing that. So, Todd, That's right. what's yours? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he can't just be like, oh, you know. He's I'm still going to use yet. a plane. Not yet. Mm. If it's on the guy that got one of the guys that inspired me to start getting my pilot's license, he just put it out that his goal for this year is to get his uh, skydiving license. Oh. <laughs> so, I'm like, Hmm. You're gonna <laughs> shut that down. Right? Autopilot's so good. <laughs> you go up solo, skydive, and the plane will land itself. Oh, no, 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 no. Hit the no. land plane button and then jump out. We just need one like life daring experience at a time. If That's you can right. allow me that courtesy, just one at a time. Oh, I'm gonna run the don't company. Have a lot of stuff at stake. Right? I'm gonna run the whole thing by myself yeah. at some point. That's pretty Again, clear, right? Water. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Just stamp it just, on top, you know. <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you figure out your superpower? superpower? I don't know. That's tough. I have the the debate all the time. Like, would you want to be invisible or would you want to fly? Mm. I think flying makes the most sense. Mm. Super but what strength if, like, would what be if you, fun. What if you had to fly, but he was like really slow? They're like, you've oh, been blessed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then he's like, just real slow. What a hilarious take on it. When you got your wish. <laughs> when you make your wish, you need like, I need, I want to fly fast. Yeah. 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 You, you got to be really sure specific with like, it. Yeah. That's so great. I, I just, yeah. I didn't think that that was a possibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like most people think you're gonna fly. And what would your superpower be? Like super um, when Holly asked me this question, it's actually I, I know I keep bringing it up, but I really want um, the the jet, the force. I oh, I'm use right. the force. And I tried that's as a so kid good. too. Oh. I remember being like four years old. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Pretty good. okay, that's Door a good open. one. Yeah, that is a good one. What is that called? It's and like something, something like that. Well, yeah, because then I can like you know I wouldn't have to get up to replenish my drink. You know, <laughs> like right there, and then I could get whatever I want. It's like you know you don't want to do that. You know, you right? Want, you want to yes, that's pretty, forever, you know? that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So okay, I I think I'm, Jedi mind tricks beat superpower, but that's yeah. Me personally. I don't know. I'm that's over here good. flying real slow like a dope, and you're controlling all people and things. And then I pass on into the fort. Then I can like you know then the whole like teleport not teleport. You know what I mean? What they do the ghost when they come back and the Jedi's when they do that. You know. Yeah. Like oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah so much I'm better thinking. Than mine. I'm thinking they've got a lot of tools in that. In that. Dang uh, it. I really. What a huge just, mistake. I went like I made. Avengers, Marvel. You know, I most went, people like, do. That way and DC and you. Most people I do. Like this. I, I like this. I like this. Grew up on Star Wars. When was the last time that you I actually tried change. to move something and using your mind powers? Oh, that's a great question. Probably not that long ago. Really? I mean, yeah. I know you're like. Yeah, it, it's at see. least several times a year that I just question what <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. Like, do you guys all do that? You guys all do that from time to time. You try to use the force and do something. Was, I mean, I think it was in the last decade I might have tried. I mean, I definitely was an adult, but I don't know so that it was funny. last week. I don't think it was that much, but I like that this has come out. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> all righty, all righty. Back, back to business. Um, are you a morning person or a night owl? Oh, uh, I'm trying to be a morning person, but I think I'm naturally a night owl, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to combat that because I do have productive days and better days when I get up early and do my morning routine and stuff. So yeah. I'm transitioning into a Ditto. morning person. Same. Mm -hmm. Same exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, I try to make it the morning thing happen. It's but I can't stop it's making tough. the night thing happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the hardest part of making the morning thing happen. Yeah, yeah, it's the nice slippery slope. It is. Alrighty. Uh, what does your last name rhyme with? Mm. Oh boy. Megan, you can use your maiden if if you want to try something different. Let's see what oh yeah, you gotta go with your, <laughs> You gotta go maiden name on yours. Let's see. Uh, Snackstetter. Snackstetter. <laughs> does that count? Yes. It does. Better. Sex oh, better. 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 It rhymes with better. better. That's yeah. good. Vice President Harris. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well, that That's works. a good one. I can't. I, I can't think of anything for mine. I'll just go with. We'll go with Todd's. That was better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. That's my answer. <laughs> All right. Final answer. What is your favorite food and/or restaurant? Ooh. Ooh. Chips and dip are my favorite. Oh, really? Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you'd go steak. Yeah, I mean, I do like a good steak, but if I had to do like the everyday, it's like any anything I can dip a chip into and follow so that, sad. man. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's so good. So any restaurant that has appetizers that includes yeah. chips and dip, mm. all of them. Um, that's but yeah, pretty steak, much every restaurant. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> anywhere, how's that? Steak is good though too, man. Yeah, but steak but is like- But good place. I don't know that steak you would do like all the time. Yeah. You know, and you'd probably yeah. be like, and there's a big difference in a good steak and a bad steak True. too. Yes. So yeah. yes. Uh, I am well known for loving Taco Bell. Yes. I think my real answer is probably, and I do love Taco Bell so much and I always have, but I think probably pizza is mm -hmm. my, overall my favorite mm -hmm. food because mm -hmm. I think you don't have as big a disparity either between the bad pizza and the good pizza. There's this the Little Caesars true. on the good end of the spectrum. No, I'm hey, just kidding. <laughs> I like Little Caesars. Do you really? I, yeah, I don't I don't like it. it. I mean, it's not my favorite. I'd like, rather go to the I've hut, frankly. Worse. I would rather go to the I've, hut. I've had worse pizza than Little Caesars. Yeah, there probably has been. We won free pizza for a year in college, Todd and I did, because we made a layup, free throw, and three-pointer in 30 seconds. We each did it, and we got pizza for a year. Is that Someone one of your else? questions? No. If we won, okay. <laughs> no, I thought maybe. Did they pay up on it? I mean, did you guys get pizza for a year? No. 100%. It was us two, and then there's this little like ten year old kid that shot. Too, His name was John Tay. John Tay, yeah, and, and I think he did he hit them all too. No, he, he missed the three. Oh. Missed a, the three, like, and we were so hoping, man. He just rubbed it in his face. We were like, <laughs> you we eat so much pizza. There it is. Not you. There it is. <laughs> they did give us. A, it was supposed to be a pizza a month for a year, and they gave us a coupon thing that the delivery driver was supposed to punch, but they would never punch it <laughs> ever, and so it was just. Who wants a pizza every single day if you or want? Or you did the, uh, oh, I forgot the card up. Oh, my card's oh, up. Don't my worry morning. about it. We're yeah, good. you're fine. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, it, it was a lot yeah. of pizza. And that was Godfather's, Godfather's pizza. pizza. That was good pizza, yeah. too. That's not bad pizza. Out now. Where yeah. would you eat pizza from now that, like, your favorite pizza right now, where would you get it from? Um, I like Brozini's a lot. Mm. And I like, uh, I like Chicago's pizza a lot. Mm. Just Sorry, really good. good. Roselli's Pizza. It's off oh. of Michigan up here, and it's uh, like a deep dish. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Oh, man. I don't know. I'm into, like, the Amores right now. There's a place mm. in Zionsville, and I there it's, like, uh, New York style, and they have, like, this, this like, Greek kind, which is way oh, wow. weird, but I love it yeah. so much. One day we'll take you down to Evansville, and we'll introduce you to the Slice. Slice mm, is classic. Dude, dive pizza. pizza. Yeah. It's good. Buy it by the that's Slice. Different, like, ranch pizza, and, like, there was like, potato, potato pizza. pizza. Potato yeah. pizza, yeah. 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 Pizza with potato on it or something yeah. like they that. They also would serve raw oysters in a little pizza dive bar. <laughs> Wait, this place? The, the Slice, yeah. The slice. There's yeah. just so many things that happened in that place that just, yeah. including the oysters. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Wow. But, okay. but it's great. College campus, man. You can't go Yeah, you never know. Yeah, you just never know. It's like midnight and you're hungry. Todd, what was your favorite food? I need to know it so that I can facilitate it. I don't know. That's tough because I... I can eat so much food, which <laughs> you can tell by my body I do. Uh, but I, I love steak. I love ch anything with chips. Taquitos, frozen taquitos. Throw those really? in the oven. That is a weird love. Wow. Yeah, that's one of my faves. Nachos, but that's chips with cheese. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're just naming a lot of foods we yeah. love, like we all like a lot True. of food. We just well, love yeah. it. But what I found, True. the reason why I, some of these questions are what I asked the Asians because there was a resounding theme. Yeah. And Jordy's going to have to remind me, but taco was like a huge favorite oh. of the team. I mean, yeah, like, I think more, awesome. I think taco was like the winner. 
Um, and then I, maybe pizza was the other one, Jordan. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, but only Allie was like the outlier. She's like, I like down home maybe? cooking. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. like oh. everybody else is like, like Cracker Barrel stuff. Uh, yeah. 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 Who doesn't love that though? Like, That's good pizza, too. Pizza, tacos, yes. pizza, tacos, pizza, tacos, and there's Allie. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. man. That's good I stuff, too. Though, no, yeah. I love it. I love it. I think we're going to have to dress up as tacos for the next pole, plane poll, though. Yeah. There you go. That would be so fun. That would be fun. I already have a costume. Ingredients, and there could be, like... I was like, what about, like, oh. game show? Like, you said that. I was like, that could be a fun, like, dress up like the different games. Like, I could be um, Plinko. <laughs> you know, or like the wheel. Plink is Price awesome. is right. Yeah, we um, can just be Price is right. Anyway, or Price is right, or but even nice again, like the wheel. You know, and you, the somebody could wear like the million dollar. Yeah. Do you remember that uh, that app that was popular for a while that would age you and it looked really realistic? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine looked like Bob Barker. Oh. No joke. Yeah. Like dead like him. That's good. I mean, uh, it could be worse than Bob Barker. It's jarring. Barker. It's jarring. <laughs> is how I found it. <laughs> All right, last question is going to be rapid fire. Don't don't overthink oh, it. I've got it's one for each of you. Okay. okay. Oh, it's a different question. For yes. You? Okay. Megan, who's the favorite wagoner? <laughs> Sarah and Amy. That's, and that's Anna. right. That's right. <laughs> yes. Sorry, guys. Well, hang on about that one. Terry. Yes. Who's the favorite Ferris? Megan. Easy. Who's the favorite? Nobody Brennan? likes Todd. Ooh. Who's the favorite Brennan? Oh, Ooh. that's a good one. I th I think. I gotta say Anna just to be nice, but really Devin, uh, we go way back further. So I'm gonna say Devin oh, just to make oh, Anna hot mad. Take. Well, you gave hot Anna take. based on mm -hmm. the, yeah, so yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, I threw that that Brennan in there. You guys yeah. didn't see that coming. I've been that, was that was a good one. That was, was tough. Hard. Yeah. Mine was easy. Andy and Terry are gonna come most. at me. Should've said one of the kids. Blake. Oh. Yeah, that would be, well, that'd be kind of mean though too. Sure. Like I'm a favorite of your children. That's not nice. That's not nice. Well, that's it. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Yeah. That was fun, Kate. Oh, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, fun talk. Thanks, Kate. Can we have an awkward oh. moment? No, no, stop oh. it. No touching. <laughs> no, this was great. It's not going to work. Hopefully very insightful. And yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Good job. Clapping.